Okay, so let's begin. Good afternoon, everyone, and to members of the board of directors of Claire and of EU Robotics, to friends and interested observers of both associations, you're all very welcome indeed. This is the signing ceremony of a memorandum of understanding between representatives of two communities, two fields of technology, AI and robotics. For the next hour, together, we will learn more about the shared intentions and aspirations of Claire and EU Robotics, about some of the expected areas into which their cooperation will take them and the exciting prospects that this cooperation will offer for research and innovation. My name is Steve Doswell, and I will host this event from my base here in Birmingham in the UK. We will hear from Morten Irrigans, representing Claire, and from Stefano Stramagioli from EU Robotics, and they will give us an introduction to the two associations and explain why AI and robotics need each other. There will um, also be a short panel discussion later on, but we will go to Frankfurt where Holger Hus and Bernd Liepert will be ready with their pens poised to sign the Memorandum of Understanding. Once the formalities are complete, we will have um, a little time for your questions, uh, which will follow straight on from the panel discussion. And then it will be two o'clock European time and we will close. Just to manage your expectations, I'll keep the introductions very brief. Each of our speakers and panelists is a distinguished figure with an impressive CV. But if you want to know more about them, you will need to make yourself some coffee, book some reading time in your own busy calendars and check them out on LinkedIn. But before I make the first introduction, I will just share with you the thought that this week in Europe, the number three and units of three have been significant. Of course, in the world of business and communication, we recognize the power of three. So three days ago, three prime ministers from Poland, Czech Republic and Slovenia boldly traveled by train to Kyiv to express their solidarity with President Vladimir Zelensky and the Ukrainian people. You may also have heard that in Britain, we've had some good news this week because uh, Nazanin Zaghari Redcliffe was freed after being a hostage in Iran after six years and she returned home to her family. During those six years, Britain itself has had three prime ministers. What's the significance of three and six for us? Because today in our simple ceremony, we will shortly um, welcome three members of the uh, board of EU Robotics. And we had in place three members of the board of Claire. A slight change to our schedule there as you will hear shortly. But anyway, the power of three, ladies and gentlemen. But now I would like to introduce you to the power of Stefano Stramagioli. Why does robotics need AI? Stefano will offer us some answers. He's EU Robotics Vice President Research and an Executive Director, and that's not his day job. Stefano is full professor of advanced robotics and chair of the robotics and mechatronics lab at the University of Twente. From early studies in Bologna in his native Italy to a PhD at University of Delft, Stefano has since made the Netherlands his personal and professional home. Please welcome Stefano Stramagioli. Thank you very much, uh, Steve, for a very kind introduction. So I'm uh, very pleased and honored <clears throat> to be part of this important uh, step for Europe uh, for ro robotics and AI. So next slide, please. I will first introduce you very briefly, uh, say a few words about e-robotics and what is important related to AI. E-robotics is really the largest network of robotics and business in Europe and has a long history. There are now about <clears throat> 250 institution uh, connected to uh, robotics is a non-profit organization and, and really binds all stakeholders from you know from from the say the beginning of the chain until the end of the chain and uh, uh, it binds also um, academic and industrial communities and actually the old structure of the board of directors is connected that way it all started with Euron, which then uh, was an uh, academically steered organization and then europe uh, was formed and then together, that was the basis for, for e-robotics. <clears throat> we have more than 30 topic groups uh, active in various fields uh, uh, and um, a lot of activities, as I will show you in the coming, upcoming um, slides. So it was the former public uh, side of the uh, former partnership PPP uh, called Spark. It was um, uh, in the last frame of H2020. And there are still projects running uh, currently. 
uh, robotics is, is very wide. You know, you, you have applications in human machine interaction, you have application on the air, on the ground, on the water. You have application in edutainment for kids, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to teach and, and, and um, kids and help them with possible difficulties. And in healthcare, there are many, many different applications and as well as, as in transport, as you can see in the pictures here uh, shown. Um, the, we, we organize a robotic number of activity. Uh, I welcome all of you to ERF 2022, taking place in Rotterdam in June. And that is one of, that's our flagship event. <clears throat> and we have a lot of other activities like, for example, the European Robotics Weeks, in which we quite try to, to concentrate attention on robotics in Europe for a week uh, uh, in the year. And also robotic leagues for competition and, 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 and a number of other activities. Next, please. Um, looking forward to robotics, you know, and, and the AI will change uh, our life, will change our world. And, and it will have a lot of influence for healthy living. And it will have a lot of uh, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, contribute to growing an economy uh, uh, and um, achieving uh, uh, the green and digital revolution uh, in our society. Um, the big picture, I mean, we, we, we really need to, to take to tackle a number of, of, of issues, you know, robots have to be easy to deploy, otherwise they will not be used as much and it needs to be like an iPhone, so to speak, but then on a much higher complexity level. Um, and uh, it should be business resilience uh, to, to cope with the changing economy challenges that we'll be facing in the coming years. And, uh, and we'll have to be addressing the green uh, uh, challenges in front of us, which the European Commission has, has pushing uh, as a leader in the world in that respect. And, uh, and the, the situation of COVID has showed us that these is really are, are all aspects that are very much uh, expected for our future. Um, AI is just part of it, you know, and, and uh, we uh, in the robotics community, we have touched of course parts of AI as integral part of the robotics, but of course there is a bigger community which is represented here today, which uh, has a lot more expertise on certain aspects of of of, of AI, uh, and and the, and the, the issue is the other way around. So this is the challenge that we need to face is you know to combine the excellence that that, that is already available in 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 Europe. Uh, on AI and then combining with what as roboticists can do most best, best, which is the the side of the physical intelligence, which is you know very very complicated. You know people think about the, when they see a robotic hand like uh, a problem solved, which is absolutely far from being the case. And the, the connection between the say the challenges of the mind and the body bringing together is is really the future of of robotics and AI in Europe. Next, please. So. Um, what are we expecting then from from uh, from AI? So I think that we need AI in in the physical machines. So robots are, as I said, are interactive machines. Like you know, we try to copy kind of animals which are able to interact with the physical world, and that is very different than pure digital process. And that's the expertise that e robotics definitely uh, can bring into this cooperation. But we need definitely AI to make the, uh, the right decisions. So on the cognitive level, there is a lot going on in the AI community, which we can absolutely merge and use to have an effective uh, uh, use of robotics and AI together. And we need AI really in, in design and development to optimize the and accelerate uh, 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 progress in this field, which will change the world in which we will be living in. And of course, everything should be done in the very European way, different than our part of the world, should be trustworthy, physically safe, and dependable. And I think these are the challenges that I'm, I'm really looking forward to share with you. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, hello. Um... Am I introducing myself or am no, I no, just... no, 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 so I just uh, I'm unmuted so I could um, just pause for breath and then uh, smoothly move on to introduce you, uh, Morton. So thank Excellent. you very much, um, you. Stefano. Um, that was uh, a very good introduction to, um, to uh, the EU robotics perspective. 
Um, and now we will turn the record over. You see, I assume most of you are from the, uh, the vinyl generation. We turn the record over to listen to the other side, why AI needs robotics, and also for an introduction to Claire, the association. And here to tell us about it um, is Dr. Morten Irgens. Morten is vice chair of the board of directors of Claire also the association's director of innovation. His day job, to use that expression, is as Dean of the School of Innovation, Economics and Technology, and also Chief Development Officer at Christiania University in Oslo, Norway, also Vice President of EDRA. So, welcome, Morten. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, why AI needs robotics? Well, let's talk a little bit about Claire first. Uh, next slide. Um, and... Um, again. Uh, okay, so Claire is an international non-profit organization, uh, so-called ASBL, uh, um, uh, incorporated in under Belgium law. Uh, we have offices in, in uh, eight cities across Europe and are expanding. Uh, our goal is to position Europe as a global leader uh, in human-centered artificial intelligence. Uh, and uh, of course, in the areas of research, in the area of innovation, and also in use, in, in, in uptake across Europe, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe's fabric of uh, uh, public uh, institutions and small and medium-sized enterprises and large companies. Uh, of course, we, are, we want to achieve a worldwide brand recognition for AI made in Europe. We believe that Europe... Uh, needs um, needs the type of lighthouse that we see other uh, regions that we are competing with have uh, like uh, like we we do have uh, with uh, with the uh, European Space Agency as, as an example Airbus uh, CERN etc our focus is to a large extent uh, not only achieving this worldwide brand recognition but we really have a focus on AI for all meaning that the development of AI across Europe should come all citizens, uh, become a benefit for all citizens, but also AI for good. Technology can do a lot of fantastic good things for, for our citizens across Europe, across the world. Uh, and uh, focusing on that is, uh, and focusing on human-centric AI is, uh, is key to Claire. Next, please. Uh, support for Claire. Well, we have uh, uh, around 4,000 individual supporters. Uh, among, uh, among them are 2,300 AI experts with PhD or equivalent or more, and uh, more than 1,000 supporters from industry. Uh, of course, also a number of large and, uh, and fab fabulous in international institutions, uh, AAAI, ESA, URAI, etc., and top AI research centers, uh, DFKI, uh, INRIA, TNO, uh, Sintef, et cetera, et cetera. And nine governments have uh, publicly uh, stated their support for Claire and Claire's vision for, for a future for, for Europe. Next. And next. Uh, well, uh, what is, Claire has, uh, is, um, comprised, is comprised of a number of networks. The first thing we did was to establish a research network. This is a network of uh, AI research groups, uh, artificial intelligence research groups, research labs, research institutes. And there are four, more than 430 of them representing over 24,000 employees, uh, including all uh, admin staff, et cetera, in 37 countries. We are also uh, today uh, officially launched um, uh, our rising researchers network. This is, uh, this is a, a network of postdocs, PhDs, and master students, which will be an, a wonderful addition to, to our research network and an important source for Europe. Uh, as we launch, we have more than 130 members, but of course we are going to reach a fantastic number by summer. And, uh, and, and lift this, this is going to be exciting. We are also developing an innovation network which, which we launched uh, just before uh, in the fall last year, uh, where we are developing a network of startups uh, and uh, established companies uh, across all of Europe. 
with three networks like this, we can connect them uh, and we can, uh, we can get a one plus one plus one to be much, much more than, than three. Um, and that is also the thought behind why we are uh, now sitting down and talking with EA Robotics. Next slide, please. So why AI needs robotics? Well, the idea of robots has inspired research in AI and artificial intelligence from its beginning. Uh, well, an, in, an intelligent machine needs a body and a mind if you want, if you want. And now there are, of course, more possible application areas, more possible things in the combination of AI and robotics than we can imagine. It's a fabulous opportunity and possibilities in the year ahead to see how this can be combined. Uh, and and, and, the, and the, uh, if you just sit down with a cup of tea and think about it for five minutes, your list will become very long and you see the exciting opportunities and possibilities. There are intriguing and very difficult challenges that arise when building robotic AI systems because the physical world is difficult to model and predict. Actions in the physical world don't always have intended effect. Robots, robot hair, hardware or bodies, if you want, they don't work perfectly. And robot hardware can be difficult to program and control. But the interaction with humans and other robots are especially challenging. Anything from safety as, uh, aspects to effective collaboration. Just think about the use of robots in manufacturing versus the use of robot in healthcare versus the root and, and not only in healthcare, in welfare, in interaction with humans in, in a daily uh, social uh, context. Really difficult, really exciting, and really a great opportunity, both in science research and in developing new programs and, uh, and um, companies across Europe. So uh, yes, AI-based robots, robot, AI-based robotics, it truly is a vibrant and diverse field of research within AI, strongly uh, present at all major AI conferences and in all major AI journals. So of course, uh, it's, it's represented by research groups at most major AI research centers in Europe and elsewhere, and it is increasingly a major focus uh, in innovation and industry. What we have seen so far is just the beginning. And many intriguing challenges remain, as I have said, and also is, uh, has been explained by Stefano from EA Robotics. Also, AI-based robotics is well represented already in CLEAR, as you can see on the next slide. Uh, we, um, we have a 151 members that are conducting, conducting research in robotics in our research network. Uh, 120, 12,000, what does it, and it's too small for me to see, but in any case, uh, the informal advisory group that Claire has in, uh, in robotics include uh, Wolf, Wolfgang um, Burgard uh, from Freiburg University, uh, Professor Raja Shatila, uh, SMART uh, and ISIR, sorry for my poor English here, uh, and Pierre and Marie Curie University in France, uh, Danica Kragic from the Center for Autonomous Systems and, and KTH in Sweden, and uh, Daniel Nardin uh, from Sapienza University of Rome, Italy. And this is uh, our informal advisory group that we are. Um, uh, that uh, is, is uh, making sure that Claire is uh, up and running in this area. And it's natural then to sit down with uh, EU Robotics and say, okay, what can we do together here? How can we pull and, 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 and lift the, this intersection we are working on? It's two areas of key strategic importance for Europe. And strengthening ties between Claire and EU Robotics will. will position Europe for success in AI-based robotics. It will create major benefits for research industry and society. I would say it this way. Uh, Europe has excellent universities, excellent research groups, and excellent companies 
in artificial intelligence and in robotics. Um, we are slipping in the global positioning uh, in general in technology in uh, Europe. And combining efforts like this will turn that trend. Uh, so on our way to uh, what the politicians talk about tech sovereignty and data sovereignty and positioning Europe for the future, we will contribute together in the areas where robotics and, and artificial intelligence intersect. Thank you so much. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much to um, Morten. That was a very passionate uh, introduction there and a very sort of passionate uh, um, um, promotion of uh, uh, Europe's, um, Europe's um, sort of uh, uh, ex excellent qualities there. Thank you very much for that. So we're a couple of minutes ahead of time, which is almost um, unparalleled in my experience as a moderator, but that's very good to, to see. Now we are going to move on to a joint presentation from the heads of the two associations who are actually together in Frankfurt. So I can now say, you know, we are going live to Frankfurt. I guess this makes it a hybrid event. Um, so um, Holger and Bernd will sign the memorandum of understanding between Clear and uh, EU Robotics, but they will make a short presentation first of all. Let me briefly introduce them. So Professor Holger Horst is the chair of the board and co-founder of Clare. In his day job, he is the uh, Alexander uh, von Humboldt Professor in Artificial Intelligence at Aachen. Uh, no doubt, um, Holger, you're very pleased to have reached Friday afternoon of a very busy week uh, after presiding over um, European uh, AI week. So um, I'm, sure, and I'm sure that's also true of your colleagues in, uh, in Clare too. And for EU Robotics, we welcome Dr. Bernd Liepert, President um, of EU Robotics and CEO of his own company, More About Robots. Bernd spent almost 30 years with KUKA, uh, including several years as Chief uh, Technology Officer and finally as Chief Innovation Officer. Bernd is based in uh, Augsburg, but as you now know, um, we find him in Frankfurt. So over to you, Holger and Bernd. Yeah, sitting together in one room these days means uh, it's not only a joint success story, but uh, we took care of being vaccinated and tested, no doubt about this. Yeah, and now it's time uh, to talk about uh, coming goals for sure. It's not only signing a memorandum or, or some nice words in collaboration that one side needs robots and the other side needs AI. It's really to establish uh, joint activities and taking a look on, 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 on EU Robotics and the same on, on the CLEAR side, we have uh, big uh, teams working together in topic groups, uh, uh, doing the grassroots development for all the, the, the stuff we need for road mapping in the future. And therefore, we will uh, develop a comprehensive understanding of the overlap between the two areas the, the embodied AI really making robots smarter and, and, and more intelligent. Another important goal for us is um, to more closely link the communities together to create a better mutual recognition and appreciation of the interaction between AI and robotics. We've heard in today's presentations earlier in the session that uh, that recognition and appreciation is actually there with many of us. However, over the last few months, as our colleagues in the EU Robotics and us and Claire started to, um, to talk more to each other, we realized that this is just the beginning and indeed much more can achieve. There are areas within robotics that are not so well known to most AI researchers, <clears throat> even those that, uh, that are uh, very active in robotics and vice versa. So we feel that um, creating opportunities um, to enhance this mutual understanding and recognition uh, will actually be very helpful to both communities and uh, massively increase their joint impact. We will foster the collaboration within the communities because especially in, in Europe, uh, we need to develop uh, the roadmap and the systems more intelligent than in other places all over the globe with perhaps much more money than we have. And therefore we cannot duplicate all our, our efforts. Yeah, we have to, not, to, to stop reinventing the wheel again and again. And therefore we have to focus on the knowledge transfer uh, between the two groups. 
So we have identified jointly a number of priority topics that we would like to focus on between the two organizations working closely together. These include a number of important research areas, such as human-robot physical interaction and social dynamics, autonomy in robotic systems, bio-inspired robotics, safety aspect. And I want to uh, point out that, you know, while nowadays, of course, there is a lot uh, of emphasis and rightfully so uh, on the advances uh, that have happened in machine learning and what they can bring to fields such as robotics. When we talk about safety, aspects other or areas of AI other than machine learning become also quite relevant, such as, for example, automated reasoning. And finally, real-time capabilities, which of course play a big uh, role when you interact with the real world or with humans. From Stefano, we already learned that the robots are all over the place and therefore we are focusing on special application areas like agri-food to work on a, on a healthy living environment in Europe, including healthcare and medicine. And that's not only surgery, that's a lot of additional uh, development in this area from, from hospital automation to really supporting all the treatments of the patients. HL production, yeah, getting robots and people working closer together, not doing dark automation, but uh, implementing uh, intelligent industrial robots into a collaboration scene. So smart cities covering maintenance and inspection topics. Uh, in, in, in formal presentation, I always made the statement that uh, thanks God we had no war in in, in, in Europe since 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 decades, uh, this changed a little bit, but it does not change the need of automated support in the, in the cities. And uh, domestic robots, space robotics, these are topics which we added to this field really to cover everything where you could imagine to implement robots supporting us in our daily life. Let's go to the next slide, perhaps. There are a number of joint activities that we're planning to roll out over the coming months. Um, amongst those bi-directional information channels, just in order to get more information flowing between the two communities to enable that uh, mutual understanding, the transfer of knowledge. We will organize joint events and workshops between the two groups, the folks from the AI community, uh, together with, 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 with our people from, from robotics, really to address and to develop uh, getting ad, uh, uh, um, advances and, and challenges in the intersection between these two, two areas. And we will establish strategic communication channels between uh, e-robotics and Claire in order to develop a joint strategy and approaches on subjects of common interest, such as in the context of ADRA, recently established by the European uh, com uh, Commission, in order to give them advice uh, on how to best invest in the area of AI-based robotics. So this is a topic of great mutual interest in which we very much uh, hope to work together for the benefit uh, of the European Union uh, and its citizens. And to demonstrate that it's not only nice talking what we are doing today and dreaming, yeah, we are developing a 100 day plan for the next uh, topics and activities. And we would like to invite you all, our friends from the AI community and our roboticists to see our and, and, and check our new collaboration in action at the European Robotics Forum uh, 2022 uh, in, in Rotterdam end of June. Yeah, and I think now it's time to work. I think now we have to put a pen to paper as it were. And of course, the real reason we sit together is so that we can do this important thing together. So we're gonna slightly adjust the camera here so you can actually see us uh, sign this. Uh. I think this is a moment where we can say that uh, on a very modest level, um, a kind of history is being made here. So uh, I think uh, we're, we all feel very privileged to uh, to witness this uh, this act of uh, pens going to paper. So a delightfully old fashioned thing to do. And here we go. Excellent. Well, congratulations to Claire and to EU Robotics for having uh, signed this memorandum of understanding.
Okay, so thank you very much, gentlemen in uh, Frankfurt. The MOU is now signed and we will move on to our panel discussion. Um, and there will be an opportunity for questions from, uh, from other uh, participants um, at, at the end of this, uh, this discussion. So we, um, we've already met uh, Morten and um, Stefano and Holger and Bernd, you have now also um, met, um, have um, presided over the, uh, the, the key, the highlight of this, uh, this ceremony. Um, so it would now be time to meet their fellow, pan, uh, fellow panelists, plural. Um, and I say it would have been time. Let me just explain. The third panelist representing Claire would have been Philippe Slusalek. Um, and I, I will explain his role because it's significant in what I'm about to say. He's vice chair of the board of directors and director of strategy and a co-founder of Claire. And in his day job, he's director of the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, DFKI, based in Saarbrücken. Now, in that role, he has had to step out from this ceremony today to play host to a, a very eminent figure, the German Chancellor, uh, Olaf Scholz, who is visiting DFKI at short notice today. So I guess our loss is, uh, is the German Chancellor's gain today. Um, so Claire on this panel will, will be represented by uh, Holger and Morten. But for EU Robotics, we have Bernd and Stefano, but also we'll now welcome David Bissett, Executive Director, and um, I think it's fair to say the road mapping guru for EU Robotics, whose own day job is as a, an independent robotics consultant and as a boss of his own company, iTechnic, based in the historic English city of Bath. So, gentlemen, we move on to um, your panel discussion. So, um, could I just throw in um, an initial question to um, ask um, what will be the practical first steps that people will see happening to, uh, from, a, from a time point of view, from, from today's opening ceremony, from today's uh, signing ceremony to, uh, to the point where this new cooperation starts to be realised on the ground? What will be the, uh, the early steps that you would take? Well, if I can start, uh, and please uh, anybody else uh, can join me in. I mean, the fact that we, we started this step, you know, uh, communication is everything. <clears throat> when there is communication, all the process will follow from that. And I think that uh, uh, already a year F, when we will have the pleasure again to meet in person, we will be able to discuss important challenges. And I'm talking now as more from the scientific point of view, because I think that there are a lot of big challenges to be uh, tackled. Uh, in order to bring the, 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 the amazing advantages that robotics and AI have done a bit, you know, not really connecting to each other to a point in which uh, the cognitive power and the, the interaction power will really play a role by making a step forward in, in for example, in manipulation. You know, uh, a lot of tasks which required uh, automation tasks in, in, uh, together with humans required to, to robots to be uh, faster than they are now, but at the same time, don't lose the safety because, uh, of course, it would not be acceptable. And 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 all these issues requires knowledge from the both communities. So I think that the first step will be, at least as a scientist, for me to try to really understand each other's work and try to create synergies to to make the, the advantage that the European community needs uh, in the future. Okay, thank you, Stefano. Um, um, Morten, perhaps I could put that same uh, question to uh, to you from a, from a Claire perspective. Now, what, what would be the early activity? What will be the, uh, the first steps? Well, the um, the two organizations have an amazing combined network, uh, an amazing combined network, and uh, the one of the things we should uh, early work on and will early work on is to is to make sure that we, we, we our network can benefit from this. Uh, that uh, our network of companies, of uh, individual scientists, of, uh, uh, of uh, entrepreneurs can, 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 can draw on the benefits um, from, uh, from each other. I think that I'm, I'm quite, 
I, I'm quite focused on how Europe uh, has um, not had the density of uh, of e- ecosystem, science ecosystem, science uh, on innovation ecosystems that we can see in some other regions. And we can do, we can compensate to a large extent by, by greasing a network and making sure that, that uh, uh, initiatives happen and that we can, uh, and people can reach each other and organizations can reach each other through over that network. So one of the early things we need to do is to, to make, create a benefits from our network members, whether they are companies, scientists, labs or otherwise. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, I'd like to um, move over to give um, David an opportunity to, um, to, to speak and for you to hear him as well. Um, welcome, um, David. Uh, good, to, uh, good to see you again. Um, I wonder, um, from your perspective, uh, just a, a, a general kind of a, um, over, um, so g- general comment about um, the significance of this memorandum of understanding being signed. And, um, and perhaps what um, what you see yourself doing um, as a contribution to um, taking this 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 new cooperation forward. Thank you, Steve. Um, so, from my perspective, obviously looking at this from from my road mapping activities within EU robotics, um, I see a massive opportunity. I mean, we we know within robotics that AI is really critical. It's very important to a lot of the functioning, a lot of the delivery of robotic systems out into the real world. Um, And obviously AI forms uh, sometimes quite a significant part of that, sometimes a very minor part of that, but wherever it is, inside those systems, it's, uh, it's really usually very important to, uh, to the function, to the end physical thing that's being done by those robots in the environment. So, so the opportunity here is, uh, first of all, to try and understand really the cutting edge in the AI community is of what is going on. And, and as you know, we know there's obviously the machine learning aspect of this, but as Holger's already said today, things, things like uh, automated reasoning um, and other aspects, the uh, natural language of, of understanding, et cetera, um, all come out of the AI community. Um, and there are doubtless techniques there that we could make use of in robotics to make robotics work better. Um, and the opportunity here is to really join these two communities together. It's, it's as we've been saying, it's about connectivity. It's about the communication between those two communities. So it's going to be very much about actually bringing people together who would not normally bump into each other. They wouldn't go to the same conferences. They would not ever meet. And the opportunity here is to use the power and these networks that Morton has said, you know, we have two huge networks here, to use the power of those two networks to bring together people who just wouldn't normally talk to each other, because that's when we know we're going to spark something happening uh, to transfer information, yes, but also hopefully to collaborate and to maybe join up and to understand the mutual benefits that we can give to each other because it isn't a one-way flow. It's not just AI helping out robotics because AI happens to fit into robotics. I think from the discussions we've had in the last uh, few months, we've come to realize that actually also robotics has a lot to give back to AI. Um, And there's a lot of opportunity for AI in in understanding robotics and the needs of robotics a lot more because it it will stretch um, the way that robotics and the way that AI work together. Excellent, thank you. Thank you very much, David. Okay, I'd like to um, put a question to uh, to Bernd and uh, um, Holger uh, each in turn about the two respective associations. Given the uh, creation of this uh, this new corporation that, with the signing of this memorandum of understanding today, um, what kind of um, structural change? You know, what kind of um, reconfiguration of the uh, the way in which uh, the two respective associations are organized. What, what, what kind of changes do you see in, in, in that regard? So in, in a technical change in the way in which the associations uh, operate or changes to structures or creation of new structures or none of those things. So, so what, what, what would be your perspectives? Could I ask Bant first that question? Okay. Yeah, the structure we have in place uh, are our, our different events within uh, EU Robotics, like the Forum, the European Robotics Week, and I think we can share this uh, with 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 uh, the the AI community 
Uh, in addition, we have uh, more than 30 topic groups working on different topics in the field of robotics. And one topic group is taking care of AI. And my dream would be to combine these uh, people uh, with this huge group of, of AI specialists from the other side of the table to benefit to benefit from, from their knowledge, which means I, I don't see too many changes in the day-to-day -day, uh, business and structure and in the in the heartbeat of the association. Yeah, I, I see much more an, an addition and an, an booster, let's say, within within robotics with the knowledge which we could get uh, uh, from, from, from the AI side. On the clear side, um, we are uh, indeed thinking about a few changes. As you've heard before, we already have a so-called informal advisory group uh, on robotics because, of course, from the very beginning, we were keenly aware of the fact that robotics plays an important role for AI and within AI. Um, we would like to actually expand that uh, informal advisory group to, um, in, to integrate a few key members of the uh, e-robotics community. I think that makes sense, and we are... Uh, very seriously contemplating the creation of a special interest group robotics uh, within CLEAR. I also think we have an enormous opportunity in the context of our, of our rising researchers network. You know, these are young people uh, who, amongst whom will be tomorrow's great scientists and technologists. And some of them will be very much inspired by robotics. Some of them are already inspired by robotics and we can leverage this and we can bring them to the table. If they can be woven a little bit more into EU robotics activities as well, which I very much hope. I think it will benefit them and it will benefit the AI and robotics communities respectively, because these young people literally are the future. Um, I also think uh, it, it's a very good idea to continue what actually we have been doing for a while. Uh, and I think to great uh, mutual satisfaction, namely our joint board meetings. This has been going on now for I think half a year plus so it's actually not the case that, you know, somebody picked up the phone a few weeks ago and said, let's do an MOU. No, we've actually been working together, uh, unbeknownst to most of our um, uh, to most of our audience here. Uh, just this Monday, we had a half day workshop. We had been hoping to do this in person, but given the pandemic situation, that seemed unwise. So we didn't do that. Uh, but we had a half day workshop uh, talking about things such as road mapping, co uh, common challenges mm -hmm. and the way forward. Um, and I fully expect that we will have similar events uh, also going forward. So there's a lot of things that concretely we can do together uh, in the next 100 days and beyond. And in fact, we are already on the way because we haven't started this yesterday. We started this actually quite a few months ago. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have another couple of uh, questions. Um, we will explore those perhaps before we turn to our wider audience. So. Um, I have a question. You, you um, both associations are founder members of um, ADRA, and ADRA is only a fairly recent um, creation. And I, um, I think, is probably a question which a number of people out in the in the in your wider communities may have. Um, what is the particular value of entering into a bilateral um, um, agreement? Um, like this, rather than um, pursuing it through the, um, the 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 wider the wider uh, ADRA context, I I can I can jump in there if you don't mind. Please. So uh, ADRA is a fascinating and interesting initiative. Uh, ADRA is the private part of a public private partnership with uh, with the Commission, and uh, and and uh, we uh, there are five associations, five great associations who uh, have founded ADRA, um, uh, Ellis, Claire, uh, E Robotics, and URAI, and Claire, and uh, did I miss some? And BDVA, of course. And uh, we, uh, we 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 look at this as an ecosystem. We look at this as a collection of associations with different roles. And we do need to see, we do need to look at how we are developing the capacity in Europe by, by playing all, our, all these organizations strong. And we are, so in many ways, we are looking at ADRA, we are looking at this as an ecosystem. We are, we are five plus one, the five founding associations and ADRA. And for some activities, we, we push it through ADRA. 
for some ad activities, other choose is to rely on one of the founding associations or more of them. It's also that uh, the fact that um, while ADRA is being the in being developed, uh, uh, both Claire and eRobotics exist, and it's it's kind of it's faster to get activities started and rolling in a bilateral way. And then we'll see later how things, I, what we will, uh, which channels we will use, which resources we will build on. We are very pragmatic about that, and all we want to do. All the five plus one association is to is to is to move ahead, uh, make sure that Europe develops in 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 uh, to in 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 the right direction. Well, so thank you very much for that. It's a very very clear um, and substantial answer. Could I just get a perspective from EU Robotics on that um, uh, same same question? The uh, the advantage or value of uh, pursuing um, your proposed joint activities on a bilateral basis. Um, perhaps I think, Bernd, I think you've expressed um, uh, opinions on this in the past. So um, could I ask you to uh, respond on that, please? <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, the, it, it, it's important really to get this broad backbone of both groups and associations uh, Claire and 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 uh, EU Robotics working closer together and to develop this full environment, which then can result in a common in a common uh, roadmap. Uh, uh, for example, on our side, David is working on, which might be the part for the full robotics understanding. And there is a lot of uh, development going on and 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 needed in 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 making our our systems really. Uh, reliable and and uh, uh, acceptable to, to to people. I think the the LC discussion, uh, which we we have to start perhaps in a moment to to talk a little bit about these or bringing bringing uh, uh, the the AI and 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 robots uh, closer to our young people to schools, for example. That's another initiative we have to work on, and that's a lot beside of. The structure which we have in the in the in the partnership, which is focused on on a, on the on developing the relationship with the European Commission, and that's an important task. I think we don't want to block Adra on this side. What we would like to do is we want to support them with all the development and knowledge we have on our side. Because uh, remembering the time we had, especially at Eurobotics within Spark or on the Spark for on the Horizon 2020, we learned that it's important to prepare uh, the the topics for the commission and to work with the colleagues from the com commission on the details and that's something which takes time and which needs time and uh, uh, in, in my opinion Adra is completely uh, booked with this development and what we would like to to do is to focus on all the other add-ons beside of this mainstream with the European Commission. I can I can add to that. Oh yeah. Well, I'll add to that anyway. Um, and it's it's the following. Um, it's so much to do that we need all hands on deck. Yeah. We need all these associations and, and and other associations. And and you know, in in a sense, you can look at it. The cake is too big for one organization to eat or to handle. Uh, uh, and there, that is one side to it. The other side to it is is. It's quite simple. It's the following. Um, uh, we need diversity in our approaches. Uh, if we only had one monolithic association, it would not be good. Having a diversity of associations that had a little bit of different approaches, little bit of differences in objectives, a little bit of different goals, but working towards uh, moving Europe ahead, that's much, much better than, than, than believing and betting everything on one approach one association, one uh, one way of doing it. So, so this is why we call this a, a, a in, a, a ecosystem because it goes in more directions than than one. But we are pulling in. We are pulling uh, Europe forward. We are really doing that. Good, thank you. Uh, that's a, a consistent message from you, Morton. About uh, uh, you, a real personal booster for 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 Europe there. So, so thank you for that. Okay, yes, I think, Holger. Let me just add one thought, you know, the way you build a strong community, I think is one link at a time, right? 
um, it's much easier to create trust, understanding, and mutual benefit between two partners than between five simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? So of course, we want the bigger network to be built, in, you know, involving these five communities that have overlap already. Of course, we all want that, we need that. But with two partners at the table, we can move much more quickly. We can explore much more vigorously. And I, I sincerely hope that some of the other partners are doing exactly the same thing. These bilateral relations are in the end, the foundation for doing bigger things together. That's how the European Union came about. This is how ADRA will ultimately function really well. Mutual trust between all pairs of partners. And we're starting with this pair of partners today because that happened to be something um, where there was an already large intersection and a great deal of goodwill on both sides, which is always a wonderful basis for doing this sort of thing. But it shouldn't Excellent. stop there. It should go further than this, of course. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I have two, two final questions. Just a reminder to anyone who's um, uh, listening in via YouTube that uh, you, you still have an opportunity to put questions to the panel before we close via slido.com. Details are on the screen there. Um, I've got a question which actually um, comes from my own professional um, area of interest, communication. Um, what would you say um, each in turn um, are the biggest um, areas of ignorance from the general public with regard to AI on the one hand and robotics on the other, which um, which actually um, um, needs to be overcome in order for um, society to to um, have a a, a, um, a correct um, and beneficial understanding of um, of the potential of AI and robotics. Could I put that question to to uh, to Holger first of all? And oh, then I'll come to, I think, Stefano. Is that Stefano yes. coming in there? I'll come to you afterwards, if I may, please, Stefano. Yeah. So, uh, Holger? Okay, I'm going to be very brief. I think the biggest misunderstanding comes from the hype surrounding certain areas in AI, and that is that the capabilities of AI systems are indeed much superior to what they are in reality. That's a real problem. And as a result, the threats that come from developments in AI are also generally misapprehended by the general public. The threat that is there right now, the primary threat, is not some sort of super intelligence subjugating humanity, right, as we see in movies. The primary threat is a gazillion of little weak AI systems that have been created and are being maintained by almost experts wreaking a ton of havoc in ways that are sort of difficult to detect quickly, right? The kind of system of the kind of bias in systems that that we start seeing now, uh, systems in, in, adopted by governments, for example, that is the real risk at the present moment. Um, and I think it's very important that the general public understands this, and that we, our researchers and innovators, start being a little bit, perhaps less enthusiastic and a little bit more realistic and responsible in the way we communicate the capabilities of our systems and their weaknesses to the general public. Excellent. Thank yeah, you. I would, Thank you. I would really like, uh, yes, I would really love to, to add to this. I first of all uh, completely share what Olga just, uh, just said, uh, but I would like to add also <clears throat> another issue. You know, uh, uh, the, the complexity is completely underestimated, the complexity of AI in general, as Olga said, mm -hmm. but also specifically, you know, people uh, have seen a lot of movies about robots and they see, you know, uh, uh, robots interacting with the world. Well, it turns out that, you know, uh, uh, if we look at the brain, the, the human brain, and I show a picture all the time when I talk about this, there is a picture in neuroscience which is called the cortical homunculus, which is basically a puppet, a human being which has been scaled on the basics, the various parts of his body have been scaled uh, relating to how much volume of the cortex of the brain are used to steer that part of the body. And this little puppet has very, very big hands. And the reason why is because a big part of our brain is just simply used to, to move and interact and sense and adapt uh, how the hands work. And that is, in fact, the reason why human beings are in the, you know, in the, in the evolution have been the animals that have been developed the fastest, thanks to the fact that they can interact with the, with the world. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, uh, AI is people have big expectation of AI, rightfully enough. But they, they do not uh, often uh, realize the complexity behind both the, 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 the cognitive side and the physical side, which is 
the movie, you know, like said, okay, the problem solved, let's go and look forward, which is absolutely not the case. Yeah, okay, great. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, both uh, Holger and um, Stefano for those uh, responses. Um, I'm going to ask one, one final question and then uh, thanks and we'll wrap up. Um, I'll put this question, uh, for the last word to David and to Morton, and it's um, in two, three years time, um, what's your um, vision of the uh, level of um, cooperation and activity on the ground? as a consequence of uh, today's memorandum of understanding. Where do you see things in 2024, 25? Well, perhaps I'll, I'll start with that. Um, Please. I, I think I would see that the two communities are working together. I would see uh, common events, common common parts of the events that we already have in the robotics, uh, whether that's um, ERF or the European Robotics Week or the forum. Um, and I would see joint... Um, Joint documents, joint joint a joint roadmap, a clear vision of of, of the way the technologies will integrate with one another, uh, a clear vision for the research community about where the where the goals are, and and I think from my experience of trying to bring communities together, which have come from very different backgrounds, the very first thing you have to do is agree on a common terminology and 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 agree what certain words mean, and I think we need to get to that point, and then we will be able to develop those joint documents. Which, which mean the same thing in both communities. And that's when you really get some acceleration because suddenly you have people who are speaking the same language um, and that accelerates um, the, the interaction, it accelerates the, the opportunities. Uh, and I would hope that in three, four years time, we've got that well underway and we're seeing some real collaboration going on between these two communities, essentially between people that don't currently know each other. And that's the vital thing. Excellent. Thank you, David. And then a uh, uh, last word from uh, Morton on this, if we could be very, very brief. Thank I you. will be brief, of course. These joint roadmaps, uh, I, I support that. And, uh, and as a result of that, and when we are doing a fast forward, as a result of that, we will see joint projects. We will see in that not, don't, not necessarily e-robotics and, and clear and the, and the collaboration there and then is, is, is having its hands on but it just leads to it. So we see joint research projects, uh, joint, uh, we see maybe a, a establishment of, of uh, startups and new activities in businesses and in, in universities. Hopefully that is the goal for everything we are doing here. Excellent, thank you. Thank you much, uh, great uh, final words. So uh, I know Holger and Bernd have to leave. So I'd like to thank uh, Holger, Bernd, uh, Morton, Stefano and David for uh, a very interesting panel discussion. Um, and not least, uh, thanks to um, um, Alexa Coder for the project manager at Claire for um, organizing all the, uh, the technical side today and um, Ryan Hartler Friends, uh, Secretary General EU Robotics for looking after the, um, the, uh, the, um, the slides as we've gone through this hour. So that's it. There's a session coming up um, at your um, European AI Week, Vision for AI, Meet the ICT 48 Networks of AI Excellence. So um, that's it. We're out of time. Thank you very much, everyone. And this session is now closed. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Well, yes, thank, thank you. you all.